YouTubers, what is up? It is Vinny Chill, and I am coming at you live again for another night, second night in a row, this time without Chris. And of course, Chris had to get back to New York after another long day of Comic Conning with me. Uh, but I'm sure he'll be reaching out separately. I think he's going to put some of his books uh, and other stuff that he got up on the Instagram page for you guys to look at soon. But I wanted to do another short haul video, tell you guys just uh, what some of you may have also seen if you were there yourself today at Mohegan Sun or if you weren't able to make it. Uh, some of the stuff maybe you missed out on and can check out next year. So again, another great day. I think I did pretty well. Uh, actually got something very special near and dear to my heart that I'll wait to the end to share. But I will start with uh, a couple of smaller books. And I got uh, Vision and the Scarlet Witch, number 12 from the 1980s. Uh, I already had uh, number four from this, which was a key issue. This is issue 12, and this is the birth of Tommy and Billy, so Wiccan and Speed. So this, of course, was already done in the WandaVision show, and who knows? I think, you know, if there's any indication from what we saw at the very end in the post credit scene of WandaVision, she hears her children, Wanda hears the children screaming, so... Did she imagine that? Is that from another, you know, part of the multiverse? Uh, they might age those kids up and have them become Wiccan in speed and become the young Avengers uh, that we know from the comic books in the MCU. So this is definitely a key issue that you might want to pick up before it blows up even more. Another book I got, speaking of... Uh, Young uh, superheroes. This one is a very young mutant. So, of course, this is X Men 201. This is the birth, or actually the Nathan Summers uh, cable as a baby. So, again, key issue. And, you know, Josh Brolin said he loves playing Thanos, loves playing cable. I think he gets along very well with uh, all the Marvel, Marvel brass. So, I think we're going to see him back maybe as both characters so anything really you know thanos or cable relevant is still a hot commodity so i didn't have that and again i think i just mentioned last night in my video that i really am trying to fill in as much of the uncanny x-men run especially in that like um one to three hundred key issues uh, i've been working on that actually was able to pick up a couple more today that you'll see Next, we have uh, first Simon Baz and uh, Free Comic Book Day from, uh, I think this was 2012-ish, I want to say. So first appearance of Simon Baz, Green Lantern. Uh, he will be in the Green Lantern show. Uh, of course, I've also talked about Jessica Cruz, have her first appearance and first time as a Green Lantern, also in my PC. But they're going to be coming out, and again, before that show hits HBO Max, I believe next year, this book has already blown up a bit, but you may not want to wait to the last moment when it's already out and everyone knows about it, so you might want to grab that book if you didn't have it yet. Uh, I was at one particular vendor spot today. I don't recall their name, but they literally had five or six copies of this book there. And the price tags on there, I have just got home actually from the casino uh, a few moments ago, so I haven't had time to go through and rip the tags off, but they're not indicative of what I've actually paid. Uh, the vendors here were actually, I think, really reasonable. Uh, some of the books were overpriced. I think that's you're just going to see that anytime you go to a convention, but they, despite markup, some of them, I would say most of them, were willing to work with you and uh, give you a discount, especially for cash. Next, we have another one of those Uncanny X-Men that I was just talking about. This is the first uh, battle between Wolverine and Sabretooth, 213. Again, uh, a bit of an iconic cover there. So this one wanted to have, I don't really like the way that, you know, Fox uh, did Sabretooth in the original X-Men movies. And then it was 
leave Shriver's slightly did it better, I would say, in the Wolverine Origins. Um, who knows if we'll see Sabretooth again? Hopefully we will. Uh, I, I think we're definitely going to see Wolverine at some point. So why wouldn't we see Sabretooth also? So again, a key issue to have for your collection. Another X-Men book I was able to get is X-Men 208. So right there in that same run. Again, this one was just a couple dollars. It's not in the greatest shape, but it's a key issue because it's the first time they reference uh, an Omega level mutant. So I think you know, that's been all throughout the comics. I don't believe anything has come out yet in the MCU because we haven't seen mutants yet. So we haven't really heard of Omega level, although maybe you could say Scarlet Witch is a, a Omega level. But uh, I don't think they've really fleshed that out in the MCU. So again, really cheap book, relevant book, wanted to have it for the collection. Next, we're going to jump to Shuri. Now, this is Shuri number one. This came out right around the time of the movie. So this was 2018, the time that Black Panther came out in theaters. Uh, this is Shuri's own uh, title, number one. This is a bit more. Uh, so let me. St this is the second uh, printing. First printing has like a teal blue background to it. The gray background is the second printing. This one is actually limited in run. There was a limited print of under 2,000. So they had plenty of copies of the first printing, but this really, I think, is the one that you want. This is the second printing, and only a couple vendors there I saw had this. And then, of course, just to go off on a little tangent, I think with, unfortunately, with Chadwick Boseman passing away prematurely, the Marvel Brass, again, said that they're not going to recast the Chala so where do they go from here? I mean, you've already had Killmonger. He takes up the Black Panther mantle for a while. They've already killed off Killmonger, Michael B. Jordan in the film. So I really think that they're going to turn to Shuri. Uh, you know, that's nothing special. I think everyone is assuming that. So when the second Black Panther movie comes out, I think you're going to see Shuri either already Black Panther or become Black Panther during the movie. There are several other books. And of course, if you've got a phone and a key collector app, you can see some of those books for yourself. I actually picked up another one I'll talk about in a minute. But I just really wanted this one because I felt that anyone out there can go and get the teal blue cover. But there's less than 2,000 in the world of uh, this second gray print. So I wanted it. Then we have uh, West Coast Avengers, and this is, again, you know, with uh, Armor Wars coming out, I think everything War Machine related is popular. On previous videos, I've already talked about the Iron Man, like, 282. I mean, I have the first, um, I, you know, the first War Machine armor, but this is the first time that Rhodey uses the code name war machine so until this issue it was a reference to the actual armor itself now it's his code name uh and it sticks obviously they call him that in the mcu already and so i think you're gonna see don Cheadle. you're gonna see Rhodey in the armor wars so you're gonna see a lot more war machine didn't have that book for the pc so i wanted to grab it now then we've got i just was talking about Shuri as Black Panther. So this is, I believe, volume five from uh, a number of years ago uh, where uh, her first run as Black Panther. And you might look at issue number one, I think, you know, three, five, somewhere around there where it's her first cover, number one as the Black Panther. But this one is, you know, speculative because I think you're going to see Namor, that's at least what the um, the rumors are. So this is the first time that Shuri as Black Panther fights Namor. It's got them on the cover there. So that's why this book is a hot book. I wanted to pick it up. Another book that you can look for is one of those Avengers versus X-Men, the A versus X series. And that also contains a book where Namor fights Black Panther and Wakanda, actually floods Wakanda. But that is, I believe, when T'Challa is still as Black Panther. So 
they might take that and kind of combine it. So my guess is that they're going to take that plot, combine it with this. So you're going to see Namor fighting against Wakanda and sure, yes, Black Panther, uh, sort of combining both of those uh, plots, story arcs. All right, now we're down to the last two books of the day. Uh, two books that one of them especially I am happy about, thrilled about. But first, to keep building the suspense, I'm going to go with this. So we've got the all-new Wolverine number one in a 9.8. And this is uh, one of those um, you know, comic, uh, they call it the Cargo Hold Edition. This was done through uh, as an exclusive or a shop exclusive. This is J. Scott Campbell. Uh, you can tell by like the long, thin body figure, like he does most of his female characters. I just, I love, uh, you, you know, everything X-23. So wanted to have this. It's a little bit deja vu because I did just buy this same book with the regular cover raw yesterday there. And then I saw this and the price was very right. So wanted to grab this as well. And so going to throw this one up on the wall, throw the other one in the long box. Uh, and then sort of as a bonus, as I was walking out at the end of the con, I just happened to go past a vendor that had some pops. So I was able to get myself the X-23 pop in the iconic Wolverine costume. So this, of course, will go up on the wall there with the book. And now... <clears throat> So I got a little story for this last part, and it goes like this. There's one book that I would say, of course, putting aside like Amazing Fantasy 15 and X-Men number one and a few other ultra rare, ultra expensive Ninja Turtles number one in a first print. I mean, books that I probably, let's face it, will never own in my lifetime. There's one book for at least the last 20 years that has been consistently number one on my list, my grail book. And um, I was there today and I have like a top three. I'm sure all of you guys out there, you have like a top three or five that are your grail books. And one of them is the uh, Batman Avengers 12, the first Harlequin. Chris showed it off to you guys. He has that already, but it's always, uh, it's eluded me to this date. And I finally figured, you know, I'm going to pull the trigger on that book. I'm going to go get it. So I went to this vendor. I won't mention any names. And I was like, you know, we haggled, haggled over some of the pricing. And I was like, I'm going to go take a walk around. I'm going to think about it, mull it over. So I did a lap around the building, ended up talking to a few of the vendors I know, did a little bit of due diligence, you know, checked the recent eBay sales and everything, decided I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab it. Walk over the booth and I saw someone walking away as I was walking up. And of course, wouldn't you know it, that the guy that was walking away bought it. And even the dealer, you, you know, he felt bad. He was like, uh, I'm sorry. He's like, I really haven't sold much of anything today. And that right there goes your book. And that was like my biggest sale of the day. And I was just totally crestfallen. Uh, it was an 8.5 and it was a newsstand. And it was for, you know, it wasn't a nine or higher, but 8.5 in a newsstand. And it was, I think, reasonably priced. So I was ready to pull the trigger, get one of my top five grail books. And again, it eluded me. So I was just, you know, head hanging down, walked away, totally just, you know, whatever. Oh, well, try again next time. I ended up, there was about 10 minutes left in the con. So I ended up walking the showroom floor again, went over just to a few random vendors towards the exit. And one of them I went up to, he didn't have much on the wall, but I could tell he had some stuff behind the counter, behind his table. And I said, do you happen to have, you know, first Harlequin? And he turned around, he was looking and he was like, no. And then another book caught my eye on his wall and it was X-Men 101. And again, that's like my number one grill book 
for the last 20 years. And I've been really wishy-washy. It's like, if I'm going to get it, I want to get it in a nice grade. I don't want to just get a five or a six, maybe a seven. Definitely don't want to go lower than a seven. But let's face it, you know, not all of us have a ton of money out there. So for the average person, can you even afford something higher than like a seven, maybe seven and a half? And I noticed it was a nine, but it didn't have a price tag on it. So I asked him about it and he said he literally just did a deal. I think acquired it from an, either another vendor or a customer did a trade. He hadn't even had it long enough to price it and really properly put it up on the wall. And since the con was over, he was just going to pack it up and take it back home. So we talked about it. He threw out a figure. I was a little bit surprised where he came in thinking it was going to be higher. And I sort of pushed the envelope and got him to go a little bit lower and very long story trying to make it slightly less long. I am now the proud owner of my grail book in a nine Oh. So for me, this was a huge crowning achievement. I have been searching for this book. It was kind of ser serendipitous how it happened today. Uh, I thought I was going to walk out of there all sad and dejected, missing out on my Harlequin. And instead, I end up getting an even better book at a very reasonable price. So to me, this is, this is like the book. And I'm very happy in a 9-0. Um, couldn't do too much better than that. And then, of course, as I'm going out, I stop at that pop vendor and also got the matching pop to go with it. Already had the red Dark Phoenix pop. Now I'll add this one to the collection. So by the next episode, you guys will see this book and this pop on the wall behind me. So that's it. Sorry for the uh, long-winded diatribe, but that was Terrificon 2021. For me, it ended on a fantastic note, had a great time. Shout out to all the vendors there. Very nice, reasonable, good to work with. Everyone was friendly. Everyone just seemed really jonesing to get back out there and check out a con to be at a con. So uh, I know I'm not really aware of really any drama that happened there. It was just kind of a bunch of uh, nerds singing Kumbaya and throwing out money. Uh, but that's all for this episode. And again, thanks for tuning in. Um, hope you learned something about it. And if you are at the con, then please reach out, leave us some feedback for us to get back to you on. We'll be at New York Comic Con uh, in about two months, a little over two months from now. But as always, until next time, stay safe, stay nerdy.